When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate people one from another as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. And then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer, truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, you that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not give me clothing sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they will also answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment but the righteous into eternal life. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And please be seated. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. On the cover of your bulletin, there's a picture of our youth friends giving from this past Sunday night. They had a, a great turnout. It was a, a, a potluck supper that was helped along by uh, Aaron Rubel, who coordinated it and prepared the, the turkey. Um, uh, the Wednesday before that, our church had our Thanksgiving meal on, uh, in the fellowship hall, and I had a wonderful, wonderful time there. Um, <clears throat> Lindsay says that um, today, so far, she's said thank you over 50 times and heard thank you 100 times. I think this November, I've had turkey and pumpkin pie about 85 times already, so um, <clears throat> maybe, maybe we feel like we've had enough. Maybe we're all full. Maybe we're all stuffed. And one of the things that we've heard over and over again is people asking, what are you thankful for? What are you thankful for? And I know that in the last few weeks, I've encouraged people to take time to give thanks, to count their blessings. But I realized I've not really done it. I've not, I've not done what I've been asking other people to do. So I, I, I thought I need to do that. So earlier this week, I sat down and I made um, a list of things that I'm deeply thankful for. I'm going to share some of that with you now. This is, this is not exhaustive, so if I leave something off of this list, I don't want somebody to say, well, he didn't mention that. He must really hate that. No, that's not it. Um, and it's, it's not necessarily in any particular order. Some of these things are fairly trivial. Some of them actually do mean a great deal, but this is just sort of a, a little mashup of a few things that I'm thankful for. You ready? Okay. <clears throat> Mountains. 
I could sit down right now. Um, mountains with fall colors. Mountains in the winter when the leaves have fallen and so that when you're driving through them you could see what the leaves obscured. Mountains in the springtime when the trees are coming back to life and everything is budding. Mountains. Did I mention mountains? I'm thankful for mountains. Waterfalls and the cool water that flows out of them. Being able to dip my toes in a cold mountain stream and leave my foot in there long enough to where my toes get a little bit numb and then I take it right. Anybody ever do that? And then maybe splashing somebody who's with me with that cold water and listening to them scream or putting my hand and having it turn nearly numb just like my toes and then putting that cold hand on someone's neck and watching them jump 10 feet in the air. Coffee. Can I get an amen for coffee? <laughs> if, if you don't like it, I don't understand you. Um, <laughs> the sound of coffee grinding, the smell of it brewing, the taste of the first sip, sharing coffee with friends, because that's what it's really about. And memories of sipping coffee with family, either first thing in the morning as the sun comes up, or last thing in the evening around the table at dessert. The sound of people gathering for church. Glenn and Lisa and Lindsay and I are blessed because we get to hear this at both of the services. We get to hear this church family at 8.45 and 11 gathering. You'd be surprised at how awake people are at 8.45 in the morning for church. They come in here chipper and, and lots of good morning, good morning, good morning and welcome. And it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing to be in that hallway in there getting ready for this service and hear this crowd getting ready for church and greeting each other. Strangers being welcomed. People who are back visiting. Maybe, maybe they've been gone for a long time. Maybe they grew up here. And then they come back. And they're home. And they're taking in the room. And some say, I remember you. I remember you. I'm thankful for children in church. I will always be thankful for children in church. For the, their restlessness. For their chattiness for asking parents questions, for when I see parents or, or grandparents lining the hymns out to them saying, this is what we're singing here right now. This is what we're, we're doing. When people bring other people's children to church and those children have no idea what's going on in church and they watch and they're wide-eyed. I'm thankful for children in church. I'm thankful for the creeper trail. That's my second office, I think, sometimes. I'm thankful for the creeper trail. I'm thankful for it in all seasons. I'm thankful to live so close to it. I'm thankful for the beauty and the busyness of downtown Abingdon. I don't know that I would have said that when we first moved here and we couldn't sleep because the trucks and the sirens came through at all hours. But now I've grown to be thankful for downtown Abingdon. And you never know who you're going to meet. You never know if, if it's going to be somebody who is from Wyoming and they've gone to barter and they've gotten the gift for having come the farthest. You never know... Uh, if they're just from down across the border in Tennessee, you never know if it's someone who grew up here and has come back. And you only learn that at the end of the conversation after you've already given them directions and five recommendations and they say, oh, by the way, I'm from here. Oh, okay, okay. I'm thankful just getting to hear people tell stories. Do you ever overhear people tell stories? Sometimes they mean a lot. Sometimes they don't mean much. Sometimes they're well, well crafted. Other times they're just, I remember such and such. I'm thankful when I get to hear people tell stories. I'm thankful for naps. Some of you may be taking one right now, but I'm thankful <laughs> for naps. I'm thankful for sunsets. I'm thankful for sunrises. I'm thankful for baseball, for the smell of breakfast cooking in the morning, for the smell of dinner cooking on the grill even if it's my neighbor's grill and I'm not going to have any of what they're cooking, I'm thankful for the smell of it. I'm thankful for the, the smell that, that, you, that you have the scent when you walk into a pizza place and you smell the garlic and the cheese and the dough. I, I, I don't know. I, I told you this is a random list. I'm, I'm thankful for laughing so hard that you cry. Have you ever done that? You laugh so hard that you realize there's tears running out 
down your eyes and, and down your face, and you try to catch your breath. Stop, stop, no more, no more. I'm, I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for friends who know me well, who know me better than I wish they knew me sometimes. I'm thankful for an extra blanket when it's cold, for the sound of rain on a roof or porch. I'm thankful for family, family living, family long dead that live only in memory. I'm thankful for my little family of three humans and one very old dog. I'm thankful for hymns, familiar and new, but especially the old hymns that we sing them so much that they sing us. And really, above all, I'm thankful for the goodness and the love of God that saturates every one of these things. Because whether it's coffee or an old hymn, every one of these good gifts is just shot through with the love of God. And I'm thankful. Now I know, I know that there's so much that is that's not the way it should be. That's to put it mildly, isn't it? I know that so much has happened that shouldn't have happened in your life, in my life, in the life of the world. We all have our challenges. We all have had the things that have crushed us. And I would never ever say, I would never say, get over it. That's, that's not what I'm saying. But sometimes I think it's important to look at what has happened and say, well, what happened, happened. That doesn't mean we have to like it. That doesn't mean that it was even meant to be. That doesn't mean that something was bad was really something good disguised. No, it might have really been bad. I think all I'm trying to say is that don't ever let what is bad make you forget that there have been blessings along the way. There are blessings right here, right now. No matter how dark it is, there's a candle that burns and there's beauty in front of you. There have been, there are, and there will be blessings. So why is gratitude so important? Well, I can think of a couple of reasons. One, gratitude teaches us how to relate to the things that are a part of our lives. We, we like to talk a lot about our possessions and what we have. Sometimes I like to put that in air quotes. I'm not sure really, the older I get, I'm not so sure what it means to own something. Because on a long enough timeline, I only have it for a short time. What does it mean to own something? What does it mean to say something is mine? You know, I can only say that my family is mine if I'm also willing to say that I'm theirs. If I ever say of a family member or a friend that they are mine and I'm not willing to say that I'm also theirs, then something's wrong. And gratitude helps me to remember that if I'm going to say this is mine, then I'm also theirs. It also helps me realize that what I have is just temporary. I may have legal papers that say I own it, but, but it really doesn't matter if I rent, buy, own. What matters is if I take care of what's come my way. If I abuse or destroy what's been entrusted to me, then I'm not being a good steward. So I need to learn to see the blessings in my life just as that is blessings and hold them less tightly. I remember Rob Bell used to tell a story about the first sermon that he preached. It was at an outdoor revival, and he said the only thing he knew to do was to type out every word that he was going to preach and read that to the people that were going to gather. So he had his script. He had it ready. The people gathered for this outdoor revival. He stood up to preach, and he opened his Bible, and a big gust of wind came and blew his notes far away, and I just about burnt my bulletin right there, didn't I? <laughs> and he said, what I learned in that moment was you have to hold it loosely. You have to hold it lightly. The second reason that gratitude is important is, well, it has to do with what Glenn read from Matthew chapter 25. Jesus tells about what's going to happen at the end of time. When the Son of Man returns, when the Son of Man comes in all his glory, and he's going to gather up everybody, and he's going to put them into two groups. You go here, you go here. You, did you used to do that when you were choosing up a team? One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. One's over here, two's over here. Sheep, goats. He's going to look at one group, and he's going to say, you win. You get the reward. I was, I was hungry. You don't know how hungry I was. 
The pantry was empty. My stomach was growling. I walked by the restaurants and everybody was eating everything they wanted, but I had nothing. And you gave money, you gave food to Faith in Action, you, you went to Feeding Southwest Virginia and, and, you, and, and you fed people and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, I didn't know anybody in town and you said, come sit at my table. I was naked, I didn't, I didn't have a coat to shield me from the winter wind and you put a coat around my shoulders. I was sick, chronically ill and I was forgotten and you came to see me, you sent me cards, you brought me food. I was in prison, I had paid for my crimes and you came to see me. And the people say, now when, when did we do that? When did we do that? And do you remember what Jesus says? Whenever you did it for one of the least of these, what? You've done it to me. And then he looks at the other group. He says, you're out. You're out. You knew that I was hungry and you let me starve. You knew that my village didn't have any clean water and you let me drink dirty water and bathe in water that made me sick. I was a stranger and you said, well, I've got my friends over here. I, I, there's not really any room at our table. I, I was naked. I didn't have a coat. I didn't, have, I didn't have a toboggan, I didn't have earmuffs, and, and, and I froze. You didn't do anything about it. I was sick and you forgot about me. I was in prison, you said, let him rot. And Jesus is going to look at that group, he says, you get out of here. And the group says, when, when? Oh, if we'd known it was you, we would have, when? And he says, I'm telling you, whenever you didn't take care of the least of these, what? You didn't take care of me. Jesus doesn't say it explicitly, but I think, I think what he may be saying is that gratitude makes the difference. When we're grateful for everything that we have, we don't mind sharing it. When we're grateful for the spot that we have at the table, we can always make room for one more. When we're grateful for the food on our table, we're willing to share it. When we have gratitude, we take care of the least of these. We also read from Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Now, how many of you have ever said, well, I don't really sing in church. I just make a joyful noise. I've had a lot of choir directors who said, if you can't sing, just make a joyful noise. I, I've always wondered what that meant. The, the, it can be translated also, not just make a joyful noise, but shout. Make a joyful noise, shout, whatever. I was a teenager Beverly's wearing all orange here. The first time that I went to Neyland Stadium to see the University of Tennessee play football. And I got to tell you, my eyes were wide open at that. That's a religious gathering if I've ever seen one in my life. <laughs> now, 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 don't, I mean, it's the same at Tech. It's the same at UVA. It's the same at all of these. It's, it's a quasi-religious gathering. And so they, they gather and they make noise and they chant. And then it all culminates what? They all sing a song together. They don't sing it particularly well, but they sing it, Rocky Top You'll Always Be. And they sing. They make a joyful noise. On Thursday, we watched part of the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, and there was a different feature this year where they were highlighting Broadway musicals. And there's a, there's a musical tribute to Neil Diamond. And so they had the cast singing there, and they had the people gathered in a the theater. And then at the, it, it ended with them singing Sweet Caroline. And I don't know, about a 1,000 people in that theater, when, when, when they hit Sweet Caroline, all thousand of them went what? Bum, bum, bum. Good times never seem so good. So good, so good. And they were just making a joyful noise. Years and years ago, when Elizabeth was about three years old, we went to the beach, and we heard, we heard a noise from an unlikely source. I associate this noise with teenagers or college students on spring break, but this, this, was, this was made by people in their 50s who I, I, maybe they hadn't had a vacation in 25 years, but they, <laughs> riding down the, the main street, the strip of this beach, you would, and they would lean their heads out the window. They had hair as white as mine, and they'd go, woo! And Elizabeth said, what is that? And we still, we did not know how to explain what that was. It was a joyful noise, at least. When I was a child, I remember maybe, maybe the, the clearest picture I have of what it means to make a joyful noise. In church, there was an older gentleman who sat a few rows behind us. 
And, and he was very frail, and he really, he could barely talk, which meant he could barely sing the hymns. And he knew this, but he knew most of the tunes. And I was too young at the time to know that it was rude to stare. So I turned around and I just looked at him. And every hymn, let's say we were singing Blessed Assurance. Everybody else is singing Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. And I look back there and he's just going like this. Ah, 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 ah. Every hymn, every doxology, every Gloria Patri, he couldn't say the words, but he could make a joyful noise. Gratitude makes all the difference. It makes all the difference. Do you remember the hymn, For the Beauty of the Earth? For the beauty of the earth, for the glory of the skies, for the love which from our birth over and around us lies. Maybe you know the next line. Lord of all, to thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise for thyself best gift divine to the world so freely given for that great great love of thine peace on earth and joy in heaven and if you don't know the words just say ah, 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 ah. 